Okay, let's talk on insulin. Let's review what we know and then go further. Insulin is a hormone of about 51 amino acids. It is secreted by the beta cells in the islet of Langerhans. Its job is to lower the blood glucose level. All cells in the body need glucose for energy. All cells in the body need glucose for energy. But only three cell types need insulin to facilitate the process of getting glucose into the cell. Glucose enters cell by something called facilitated transport. And to do facilitated transport, you need facilitated transporters, transmembrane integral proteins that allow the glucose in. It is water soluble. The only three cell types that require insulin to activate and upregulate, I guess we could say, the, the, glu the, the glucose transporters, the glucose transporters, transmembrane integral proteins, are cardiac muscle, skeletal muscle, and adipose cells. All of the other cells do not need that. Now, remember glucose, remember I should say insulin is being produced by the beta cells okay so i'm coming here in this document the beta cells themselves right here the beta cells themselves if you can see have need glucose into the cell even though they're the ones that secrete insulin they also need glucose for energy but they also need glucose to come in to monitor the blood sugar because they need to know if it's high or low so I want to point out that the GLUT2 transporters, GLUT2 transporters, transmembrane integral proteins, are in pancreatic beta cells, among some others, too. All right, that's going to be important. All right, as we look at the mechanism. So I go here. What happens is this, that here's the GLUT2 transporter. This is the beta cell right here. So... Glucose enters here into the beta cell. That turns on action involving ATP, come here, involving, involving metabolism to eventually depolarize, you've taken nerve trend, to eventually depolarize this beta cell through actions of potassium blockage and of different things. We won't get too detailed. When that occurs, it opens calcium channels in the beta cell, the cell that makes insulin. Calcium comes in and then causes release of insulin from the cell. Now, the insulin itself is being made in this cell, is being made in a, as a larger, longer protein called proinsulin. And then in the cell, particularly in these vesicles here, because here's the nucleus. It's being made on the rough ER. You've learned this before. It's going through the Golgi. Golgi releases these transport vesicles. Within here, enzymes come in and cleave the molecule from a longer proinsulin to an insulin, a shorter molecule, 51 amino acids. And that is what is released. That is what is released. So the beta cell is monitoring the blood sugar level itself. And its transporter is a GLUT2. Its transporter is a GLUT2. So when the insulin secretion beta cells is triggered by rising blood glucose levels, starting with the uptake of glucose by the GLUT2 transporter, the glycolytic phosphorylation of glucose causes a rise in ATP, ADP ratio, okay? Okay, this is what we call glycolysis. Then that causes a, a depolarization, which inactivates potassium channels. You've heard of potassium channels when we did neurons and muscle. Thus causing the opening of calcium channels. Calcium comes in. Now remember one thing calcium does is it also helps exocytosis remember even in the neurons ultimately though insulin is released
but before it's released from these granules, it was it was it was made as I alluded to as a pro insulin and then cleaved in these channels and released as insulin, the 51 amino acid. All right. Now, so we released insulin into the circulation. So insulin has been released into the circulation. Now, to this picture, once insulin is released into the circulation, so we, we started with the source cell. Remember, in endocrinology, you have a source cell that makes the hormone and a target cell that releases it. So since this is target cells for insulin, then there are only three cell types that's going to need that. Remember this, cardiac muscle, skeletal muscle, and fat cells. All the other cells do need glucose, but they don't need insulin. Do need glucose, but they don't need insulin. The insulin then comes and sits on a receptor in those three types of cells. That receptor activates, it's a transmembrane tyrosine kinase type receptor. Tyrosine kinase, ASE, is an enzyme that phosphorylates things. So this, this insulin phosphorylates activity within the cell by activating the tyrosine kinase. Ultimately, what you have in these particular cells, you have these, these GLUT4 transporters. Look, this is in the cytoplasm. Skeletal muscle, cardiac muscle, fat cells. And what will happen is when the blood sugar rises, I need to put more doors in the cell, more transmembrane integral proteins. So I want you to think of it like this. You just ate lots of ice cream and cake. You don't want your blood sugar to rise because if it does, you'll have problems with osmotic pressure, everything. So you need to upregulate, we talked about this, the amount of transporters so that the blood sugar can drop quickly by going into fat cells, cardiac muscle cells, and skeletal muscle cells. The other cells are getting it anyway. That will quickly lower the blood sugar. So you shouldn't rise above a normal level, even if you've eaten tons of cake and ice cream, if you are normal and don't have diabetes or other things. So then when you put these in here, glucose enters into those three types of cells and the blood sugar drops. The blood sugar drops. So we go here. So what does insulin do? It lowers the blood glucose levels. It enhances membrane transport of glucose in the fat and muscle cells. The two muscle cells, cardiac muscle, skeletal muscle. But in an early age, in utero and shortly after, it participates in the development of the brain and memory. So in other words, you need glucose. So in developmental, if there was a reason where the blood sugar was too low in the uh, fetus or in the young person, after that, they would not develop normal activity. And insulin, of course, inhibits breakdown of glycogen to release glucose and also the making of new glucose, glucose because again, it lowers the blood sugar. It lowers the blood sugar, okay? So we go here then. Now, how does it work again? It activates a tyrosine kinase. We just talked about that. That activates a cascade. Remember, anytime, anytime a protein hormone cannot get into a cell, it sits on a receptor and it activates a cascade within cells, generally involving a secondary messenger, but it activates a cascade within cells that causes this action to occur, okay? And that's what will polymerize glucose to form glycogen. So one of the things it will do is call glucose to form glycogen, particularly in the liver, to get the glucose out and put in storage. Convert glucose to fat. So in other words, what does this mean now? Even if you say, well, I want to lose weight, and I'm, and I'm not going to eat much fat, even if you eat a lot of glucose, all of a sudden, it will be turned into fat once it reaches the max that would be within the body. Okay? All right. Factors that influence insulin release. Elevated blood glucose. We know that. Rising levels of amino acids, because what did glucose do? It also decrease the amount of amino acids in, in, in the blood and fatty acids. Acetylcholine from the parasympathetic would do it. 
hyperglycemic hormones. They would work indirectly to do it. All of these hormones raise blood sugar. So if the blood sugar, but they would be doing it for a good purpose. But let's say they were being secreted in excess and the blood sugar was getting too high, then we need insulin to come and modulate the activity. And somatostatin, growth hormone, uh, growth hormone activity, and sympathetic depressed insulin release. Okay. All right. We go further. So here again is this cycle, which you can look at to maintain the, the glucose in the proper le the, in the blood in the proper level. Okay. So now we go to diabetes mellitus. Remember, there was another one, diabetes insipidus with the ADH, but this is diabetes mellitus, sweet urine. Okay, so we go there now. All right, so types of diabetes, type 1, type 2. Type 1 diabetes, for some reason, the beta cells just aren't working. It may be an autoimmune activity. It may be some genetic aspect, but they're not working. Type 2, the the the, the the cells are, the beta cells are working and secreting insulin, but the receptors for insulin are not good. The receptors, so then essentially it's not working. So type 1, type 2, sometimes called juvenile onset, adult onset, even though those terms are going into somewhat disuse for several reasons. The, the signs that you have of diabetes mellitus, type 1, but also really type 2 also, polyuria. Why? Because with glucose in blood, it raises the blood osmotic pressure. Remember, osmosis is a sucking action. So it would suck water into the circulation, go to the kidney, and you would urinate a lot. Now, you also will notice that that particular person, when, they, when the blood sugar is too high, will have a dry mouth because where is the water coming from? It's being pulled from every place it can, even pulled from mucous membranes. So polyuria, polydipsia because the because the osmoreceptors we've talked about this the osmoreceptors in the brain will activate the thirst center will activate the thirst center once the osmotic pressure starts to rise why because of increased glucose that would activate the, the thirst center and you want to drink more polyphagia why because you have glucose, but it can't be used because it can't get into the skeletal muscle, cardiac muscle, or fat tissue. So it's a lot of glucose. So theoretically, you're hungry because the glucostatic principle involved in, in, in satiety, that means not being hungry, involved at, the, at what we call the hunger center. You have two centers in the hypothalamus dealing with food, the hunger center and the satiety center. Because the hunger center is not seeing adequate glucose, you still are hungry. Okay, so here you got weight loss, fatigue, all of these aspects here, polydipsia that you see over here. Okay, hyperinsulinism, excess insulin secretion results in hypoglycemia. This can occur, but I'll tell you when it mainly occurs when somebody is taking insulin and they over inject. Okay. So we come here now. We talked about the, you know this particular aspect. You can look at that. So I'm gonna come back here. So I'm gonna come over here. Type one, type two diabetes. We already talked about that. The difference between the two. So we did that particular aspect. Okay. And type one, you always need insulin. Bottom line. I always need insulin as treatment. Type 2, because it's a receptor issue, and fat cells, remember the three types of cells that needed insulin? What were they? Fat cells, cardiac muscle, skeletal. Well, the fat cells, as the person gets too heavy with adipose tissue, don't work sometimes. They don't have good receptors. So when the person starts losing weight and exercising and the cells get smaller, because remember, you don't make any more fat cells under usual circumstances after a very early age. They just get larger. They just get larger. So that's what happens. So here you can use oral drugs 
insulin depends on what the condition is. I am going to close here.